In this episode, we're going to talk about using Rails assets to manage your front end libraries in your Rails app. So Rails assets is this thing built on Bundler and Bower. And you're probably familiar with Bundler already. It's the thing that manages Ruby gems in your Rails apps. And Bower is very similar for front end libraries. So actually, if you were to go to Bootstrap's repository, um, you'd see a bower.json file. And if you open this up, it's just some regular old JSON, but it's very similar to the gem spec um, in a Ruby gem. So it says like where the homepage is and the description, and it's a definition of what are the important files uh, to distribute in this package. So it also mentions dependencies, and this is convertible using Rails assets into a Ruby gem. So one of the things that people were quick to point out was that making your own gem for a front end library is a bad idea. Now this is something we've done for years, and um, when the maintainer stops maintaining it or they don't need it anymore and they kind of give up on updating the gem, that becomes a problem. So people have to fork it and they have to make their own gems or use it straight from GitHub and that kind of becomes painful. And Rails Assets was designed to solve that problem. So I wanted to make sure that we talked about that before so you could see why this makes sense and why it's important that we have this. So how do we use Rails assets? Well, it's actually really, really simple. You just add a block to your gem file with the libraries that you wanna include, and that's it. Um, you can search for any of the libraries, like we made that sweet alert gem. Um, and actually, of course, there's already four different sweet alert uh, libraries here. So there's a uh, bootstrap one that I didn't even know existed, things like that are pretty cool. So Rails assets is definitely popular. And um, all you have to do is add these gems and add these requires. So let's go take a look at adding bootstrap to a Rails app and see how it works. So here I've got a brand new Rails app with one controller and action main index. So that's it, there's nothing to it, um, but by default you can see that the, the font looks like Times New Roman, just the default font um, for an HTML file without styles. So let's go add Bootstrap in and we should see the text change and all of the includes happen. So if we open up our application's gem file here, you can see here at the top we have a source for rubygems.org and that is basically saying all of these gems by default should be pulled from rubygems.org. Now, the way that a gem server works is open source. So rubygems.org is the primary place for all of this and it's maintained by a bunch of amazing people, but you don't always have to use rubygems.org. And that is how Rails Assets works. So Rails Assets is its own gem server. And here you can just say, uh, let's, for all of these gems inside of this block, let's uh, use the Rails Assets server instead. So this is really neat because it allows us to configure which gems come from where. So here we can just say Rails Assets Bootstrap and all of these Rails assets uh, gems are going to start with Rails assets. And that is just a namespacing thing that they've done. Um, they didn't have to, but it makes a lot of sense because then the names don't conflict uh, with normal gems that you might use. So this is really all we have to do in order to install Bootstrap from Rails assets. We tell it or in the block that it's gonna come from this other source and then we give it the gem name and uh, that is it. And we can hop into the terminal and we can stop our Rails server and we can run bundle to install the gem. Now you will probably see at the top here, because I've already done this, you'll probably see at the top that it's loading like metadata from Rails assets. And mine doesn't do that because I've already tested this to make sure it was working. So uh, I've already done, downloaded those things, but you'll, you'll notice that it will pull stuff from railsassets.org when you do this for the first time. And then in your application, all you have to do is go to application.js and load bootstrap here. And then 
in your application CSS, you just do uh, require bootstrap there. And if we hop back into the terminal, restart our Rails server, we should be able to refresh this page once that's loaded. And the fonts change and the colors change. So we're actually loading Bootstrap from Rails assets. And it's as simple as that. That was really, really easy. Um, and we have Bootstrap self, CSS, and all of the, um, the jQuery and Bootstrap JavaScripts and things like that too. So all of that is being loaded appropriately. And you'll also notice, and I forgot to show this, is that when the gem file defines bootstrap here, it actually also pulls Rails assets jQuery. So going back to bootstrap's bower.json, um, we can see that because there was this jQuery dependency, Rails assets converts that into a gem dependency and then generates a package for jQuery as well. So it's going to grab the latest Rails assets jQuery and that is going to be how that works, which is really cool. So it knows how to handle that and you could actually even remove uh, requiring jQuery from, um, from your application. So that's kind of amazing that it, it does all this stuff. So you wouldn't need to use the jQuery Rails gem. You could use Rails assets to load jQuery for you instead. Um, so yeah, Rails assets makes a wonderful way of managing all of these assets in your Rails apps. And we don't have to do that much work. And probably my favorite part here is if we were to go to Bootstrap and you click on the version that you want to load, it will show you the gem that you need to require. It tells you which uh, JavaScript and CSS files to require. It shows you which scripts are available, bootstrap.js, bootstrap.scss. And then if you ever see that this isn't the latest version, like imagine that Bootstrap 4.0 came out today, but there was no Rails assets gem for it, you would just search for it and click rebuild. And that would be it. And it should go and pull down the the latest version of bootstrap and compile a new gem for you and then that would be it you don't have to rely on other people to update their gems and release to ruby gems rails assets handles all of that for you so it makes uh, for a tremendous amount of time saving for people also works with sinatra and if you want to check out how this works they have a github that you can see all the source code for this if you're curious about how this works, take a look at app models, the build directory here. And this is actually where uh, most of the magic happens. They have a Bower component uh, class here and a converter class. And the converter is the one that kind of handles the processing of those Bower components into Ruby gems. And you have all the helper uh, things for converting that. So there's actually quite a bit of work that goes into it, but it's it's reasonably simple. It's not actually that complicated. So if you take a look at all that, um, that is that is pretty much it. This Rails app just otherwise, uh, if we take a look at like the routes file, you can see that there's not a whole lot going on here. So they have all the basics as you would expect for uh, being able to access all of the packages from the Rails assets website. And that's really it. They have not too much stuff going on. Like the real magic comes from converting that uh, Bower package or component into a Ruby gem. Now, if you've already got your Rails application set up with a front end library in a gem, or you paste it in into your app assets or vendor folder, don't worry about it so much, but I would definitely recommend moving to Rails assets as you go along. You can really easily just update your gem file and uh, start swapping things out with their appropriate gem from Rails assets instead. So you could just remove those. If you haven't made modifications in your app assets folders, you could just remove them from there and swap with the reference to this gem instead. Or you could swap out the reference to like Bootstrap SAS gem with the Rails assets Bootstrap gem 
And that's really it. You can make a conversion pretty easily and definitely recommend starting all new apps with Rails assets because it's just that, um, that handy. And that's it for this episode. I will talk to you next week.